questions. Without further ado, I shall now call, now call upon the first speaker from Foy House, Anandya Varma, to express her views for the motion. Social media is not about the exploitation of technology, but service to community. Simon mean well. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, Honorable Judges, and my worthy fellows. Today, despite the opposition's negative approach to social media, I would like to focus on how social media brings us together as a community to make this world a better place. As my first constructive argument, I would like to focus on how social media platforms draw us together and are widely used to advertise events like marathons, debates, uh, film festivals and what not. When thousands of people are drawn together to enjoy new kinds of music, movies in different languages, a wealth of diverse cultures, the real purpose of social media is revealed, which is to draw people together. October 21, 2023 is the day stated for Pinkathon, a virtual and in-person running challenge for breast cancer. Thousands of people will be participating in this event to offer support and raise awareness for a much dreaded disease. The opposition is most likely to raise their misguided accusations of social media, perpetuating hate and isolating individuals. I would like to remind them that social media is a tool and something in the wrong hands uh, and in the wrong hands of something uh, and in the wrong hands something as harmless as a rubber band could be a deadly weapon. As my second constructive argument, I would like to state how social media has drawn people all over the world together to discuss important arguments, important issues like environmental activism, mental health awareness, humanitarian aid and disaster re relief, refugee migration and awareness as well as anti-bullying campaigns. UNHCR, United Nas Na National High Commission of Refugees, use platforms like Instagram and Twitter to share stories about people who've been displaced, uh, provides information about humanitarian aids and advocate for re refugee rights. According to United Nations, 10 million people have been display displaced because of conflicts in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia and Myanmar. Sudan and Ukraine step in and add to the world's refugee crisis. Social media's ability to draw activists, lawyers, advocates, world leaders and organizations to help these people has helped, greatly helped the organization. The opposi opposition is sure to accuse social media of polarizing society, bring on the innocent and what not. The social media is accused of doing, uh, is accused of doing now was done in previous eras and previous centuries. Like uh, what social media is accused of doing now was done in previous eras and centuries as well by di divisive forces such as race, colonialism, religion and political ideologies. The only wonderful difference is that social media's reach is wide and its real-time dissemination of information creates instant feedbacks. Wrongs can be righted, the guilt brought to the book and the wrong given relieved instantly because of social media's ability to draw people together. In conclusion, I would like to say that social media is the ultimate equalizer. It gives a voice and platform to people who are willing to engage. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. If you just permit me. Uh, Satvik, Dheria, that line. If I see you talking again, there will be consequences. You were talking throughout. And I intend to point out people who are talking because you do not listen. Right? So if there are other people talking over there, I will be calling out your names. Thank you, Hansiki. Questions? Yes, Cardinal. Are you really just normalizing praying the innocent on the internet just because social media can provide them justice? Is it really a wonderful difference as you quoted in your debate? Thank you for your question, Madam Interjector, the portion of which I would like to answer. Madam uh, Interjector, as I said in my debate, the opposition is sure to accuse social media of polarizing society, 
preying on the innocent and what not. I mentioned accused. Oppo the side opposition is accusing and I do not believe in these accusations. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, Alanaz. Madam Speaker, in your debate you said that social media helps spread mental health awareness. But when people are glued to social media 24-7 and for so many hours, it has a negative impact on their mental health. So what are your views on that? Thank you for your question, Mr. Interjector. For Mr. Interjector, I would like to answer. It's shocking to know that, sir, you think uh, mental health, your mental health depends on you and not social media. How can you blame social media for your mental health? If you are glued to your device, is that social media's fault? Are you blaming social media for that? Is your addiction not to be blamed for it? I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Uh, control room, could you please dim the light? The Thank you. I now invite Shaurav Bansal from Foy House to express his views against the motion. Social media gives legions of fools the right to speak when they only spoke occasionally without harming the community. Then they were quickly silenced. But now they have the same right to speak as noble laureate. Umberto Echo. How unfortunate. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, Honorable Judges, members of the floor and my dear audience. Today, I'll be presenting three key arguments to prove why social media leads to disunity, disharmony, and division. As my first constructive argument, I would like to point out that the only drawing that social media does is to draw you to your device, and that is it. A family that prays together stays together, and a family that serves social media platforms has sadly nothing to share because of the insane urge to be exhibitionists and narcissists. Now my second constructive argument. I would like to present a tragic incident that happened in the three districts of Tamil Nadu in 2018. In these districts, the WhatsApp posts were circulated about 200 criminals in North India entering the states to kidnap children. These resulted in three lives and also incited numerous mob attacks. The first victim, hacked to death, was a mentally deranged man in his 30s. The next was a turn of the ill-fated 65-year-old Rukmani, who was also killed on the suspicion of being a kidnapper. The third and the most terrifying one, a 45-year-old homeless beggar was killed and was hung from a bridge at Pulikat. All these three incidents happened just within the span of two weeks. With our eyes separately glued to the screens and our ears taking in all that social media has to offer, we react without thinking and the consequences are terrifying. For my third constructive argument, humans have always had the unfortunate tendency to vocalize hate and malice, often driven by their strong emotions, personal biases or the desire to conform to group dynamics. Now, social media has made available more far-reaching and these effective platforms for these expressions, which allow people to amplify their negative statements to a wider audience. These people, <clears throat> the anonymity and distance provided by the internet mod, uh, emboldens people to share hateful content that they might hesitate to express face to face. Conflict narratives, conspiracy theories and extremist views quickly find a home on these expressions where, on which the different voices find a place to gain attention and the moderate voices and restraint languages are drowned out, which are necessary for peace building. In 2018, the United Nations reported that the social media has played a significant role in the 2017 Rohingya genocide in Myanmar. The UN also identifies Facebook as an instrument for spreading hate speech in the country. I now rest my case but not my voice by using powerful words from a poem by Julie Shehan, which specifically talks about how social media changes us, common people, into faceless bullies which come together and tear others apart. I hate you truly, truly I do. 
Everything about me hates everything about you. I dissect you cell by cell so that I might hate each one individually and at leisure. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Cardinals. glued to our phone. Shouldn't we change ourselves rather than blaming social media for everything that we do? Please comment on that. Can you please repeat your question? Okay. It's you and I who are glued to our phones tapping away on it all day. Are we really going to be blaming social media for it rather than changing ourselves and rather than putting our phones away for a while? Please comment on that. Thank you for your question. I never blame social media for us being sticked to our devices, to the screens. But I also mentioned that social media is not driving us together, is not pulling us, is it's pulling us apart. And you know, social media has changed the way we live. The paintings that we used to see on the walls, the Mona Lisa's we used to see on the posts, are now on the Instagrams and these Facebook. By just tapping on that picture, making it one like, doesn't make a difference in the world. And the Expressions, the emojis we are tend to using, we are using right now, does not hold any expressions in our real lives. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, darling, nice. You mentioned in your debate, sir, about a study which was conducted in 2018. Are you trying to justify your stance on today's topic by a study which was conducted five years ago? Thank you for your question. The studies shown five years ago have changed in a negative way. Social media is still going to that negative path which I have said in the study which have been studied in five years ago. Thank you. All right, before we continue, I'd just like to tell, uh, please go back. Right, that last row over there. I've been seeing that you've been smiling. I wouldn't like to call out your names, but I will call out your names when people have to come up from the floor. If the grade sevens, eights, and nines, and tens are expected to sit up and listen, I think the same applies to the grade 12 students. The next time I see them, that happening, I'll be calling out your name, so consider yourselves warned. Thank you. I now invite Devishi Katyal from Pal House to express her views for the motion. In my debate, ladies and gentlemen, let us get ourselves clear on what exactly is social media. Social media refers to the means of interactions among people in which they create, share and exchange information and ideas in virtual communities and networks. Coming to which, I do think social media brings us together, ladies and gentlemen. I will be laying forth five constructive arguments to prove my stance today. Maintaining long distance relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine a life without WhatsApp. In today's world, do you really think you can live without seeing your loved one's faces? Do you think just a phone call can help you maintain that relationship? I don't think so. This is where social media acts as the only thing we can hold on to when we miss our loved ones. Coming to my second constructive argument, imagine scrolling through social media and you just happen to find a long lost friend. Wouldn't you be happy? What makes this possible? Social media. And not just that, but it also provides us with a platform in which we can always know what our friends and acquaintances are up to. It can, social media is the reason why we are able to maintain communication. Coming to my third constructive argument, that ladies and gentlemen, my opponents will try to prove that when we are using or scrolling through social media, we get very distant from the people around us. Well then, for people who are bullied, have social anxiety, who are trapped in the fear of being left out, for the people who are not being able to fit themselves in, for the people who have no choice but to be alone, for them it is an escape. And escaping is not a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen, because these same people have evolved as better and stronger individuals because of social media. Now, for my fourth constructive argument, social media enables you to find vital social connections. A study proves 57% of teens have admitted to have made long-lasting friendships through social media. So how can my opponents believe that social media doesn't bring us together? 
कमिंग टू माई फिफ्थ कंस्ट्रक्ट के बाद में सोशल मीडिया ऑल्सो हेल्प अस टू कम आउट ऑफ आर शेयर एंड इंटरक्ट विद पीपल इट गिवस अस द लेजर एंड द चॉइस एज टू हाउ वी वॉन्ट आर लाइफ टू बी और हाउ वी वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल एंड स्टीयर आर लाइफ यू लाइक समथिंग यू कैन सी मोर कंटेंट ऑन इट एक्सपैंड योर नॉलेज यू डोंट लाइक सम वन अनफॉलो सोशल मीडिया मेक्स यू कॉन्फिडेंट बिकॉज ऑफ विच यू कैन इंटरक्ट एंड सो इट ब्रिंग्स पीपल टूगेदर Ladies and gentlemen, opponent here clearly uses social media and yet is speaking against the topic. In my conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, social media enables us to be masters of our own ways of leading life. It helps us to be updated about everything happening across the world. It also discloses to us the evils of the world when we are so much aware. How can we be distant? So it proves. social media very well does bring us together and surely with the arguments i stated there is no doubt that people got better through social media and that is why social media draws us together and not apart thank you thank you any questions yes go ahead social media influences nowadays are committing suicide so how is this bringing the society together i'm sorry can you please repeat your question the social media influences nowadays are committing suicide so how is this bringing the society together uh thank you for your question with the permission to mention the chapter sir that's the answer um if you think that because of social media they are committing uh, suicide it's not that they must have personal reasons for doing things like this thank you very much any further questions yes come on uh you talked about bullying in the real world and how social media helps with that social media is being used for cyber bullying and hate crimes in copious amounts uh, in today's day and age what do you have to say about that are you really going to neglect all the cons of social media just because there are a few pros thank you for your question madam interjector with the permission of the chair uh madam interjector first of all your question is completely irrelevant to the topic the topic is that social media draws us together and while i mentioned in my debate that the people who are bullied uh get help through social media it was just an example and also if people are being cyber bullied it is very easy to turn it off i mean you just turn off your phone and done you can't just actually stop physical bullying now can you thank you very much thank you for your question I request the class students to please sit up and listen to what people have to say. The first row, second one. Boys, sit up straight, all of you. Come on quickly. That side also, class students and eights. The boys, thank you very much. I now invite Aksh Agarwal from Pal House to express his views against the motion. Life. is not just about social media there is also a life outside social media because people have become so occupied using the instagram feed and to post a perfect selfie to post on the snapchat that they don't know what is happening around the world good afternoon to the house at large today in today's world there are 250 to 60% of the people who use social media daily for 5 to 6 hours and that shows that social media does not draw us together but it completely apart us because the person is using social media alone now that straight brings me to my first constructive argument that will explain how social media does not draw us together when we are with our friends spending time with them and not using social media that brings us together when we are with our family leaving all those notifications behind and all those devices behind and spending time with them that brings us together and the best example is a school that when we all have devices we all concentrate on that single screen but when we don't have that device what all we do we try to make some new friends we become innovative we become creative and that straight brings me to my second constructive argument that will explain that is advantages of social media we all know that by using social media we become addicted and addiction can only harm us a recent example i would like to give you all that 20% of the people went into depression because of social media 
as they did not have anyone to talk with and they did not know what is happening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, social media is a world that if you enter it, you can never come out of it. And today if my opponents will say that by social media we get to know a lot of new people so I would like to tell them that by using social media if you meet a new person also then we are meeting that person virtually. And meeting a person virtually and meeting a person in real life is a very different thing. Now my third constructive argument will explain the impact of social media that creates on our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, social media users post their fake pictures and make fake ID just to gain attention as they show that this world is full of fake people so how can we trust those people who we meet on social media? We cannot trust those people. Now I would like to tell my opponents that yes through social media we get to know a lot of people but in this world if we are not giving the attention the person when he is sitting in right next to us so how can we give attention to the people who are we are meeting on social media? Ladies and gentlemen, social media users use bad language and try to threaten people. A recent example I would like to give you all that a boy from Uttar Pradesh was harassed by a group of people by a fake ID and he could not tell anyone because he was so scared, he was so frightened that he ended his life. So how can social media draw together when social media is killing so many people? Ladies and gentlemen, social media is just like a Bollywood picture. That is full of drama, action, emotions, comedy and shows how every person is enjoying the life. But it is not a Bollywood picture. It is your real life and in real life you have to live according to you and not around social media. I would like to end my debate with a beautiful quote. Social media brings the close one far and the far one close. Because the people are not living in the real world, they are living in the virtual world. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Questions? Yes, Boyhouse. Social media has also been used to support social justice and for different campaigns to benefit the people. Then how can you say that it pulls us apart? Thank you. Thank you for your question. With the permission of the chairperson, I'd like to answer. Mr. Speaker, I already mentioned in my debate about the social justice cause. Yes, social justice must help the many people. But social media is also increasing the terrorism, terrorism that is happening around the world. Social media and if you talk about the social justice also, so many people also say that they spread fake news. So if also they are giving the social justice, so what about those people who are not spending their life? Who are, the, who are spending their life outside India, outside the world? Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, Alan House. mentioned in your debate sir that social media can be used to threaten people. Are you not aware of the terms of service that actually take down the content which is even uh, considered to be allegedly offensive? Thank you for your question. We all know that we use those services but we also know that many people don't use that services because they are scared that if a person will hack his device or if a person will get to know that what this person is doing so then also he is threatened. And that causes his life. Thank you for your question. Thank you so much, Arch. I now invite Samya Gupta from Allen House to express her views for the motion. Friendships and relationships formed through these platforms can lead to real life connection, 
thereby broadening our horizons and breaking down prejudices. Coming to my second constructive argument. Haven't you ever witnessed a viral social media campaign that caused people to rally around a common cause or mission? Didn't it make you wonder about the power of social media to galvanize individuals all around the world into collective action? Ladies and gentlemen, whether it's rallying for social justice, disaster relief, or even charitable endeavors, social media enables us to unite for a common purpose, thereby amplifying our collective impact. Re remember the ice bucket challenge on platforms like Facebook and Twitter? It involved people dumping buckets of ice water on themselves to raise funds and awareness for ALS research. Now, this viral campaign reached millions mobilized communities and raised over $115 million for ALS research in a matter of mere weeks. I repeat, in a matter of mere weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to my third constructive argument. Social media allows individuals to find and connect with niche communities that share specific interests or challenges. Whether it's a rare medical condition, a unique hobby, or a specific professional field, social media platforms enable people to discover others who might offer valuable support, advice, or even camaraderie. LinkedIn, for instance, is a hub for professional networking where people from different fields, from different industries, come together where they can connect, share insights, and even discover job opportunities within their niche. Isn't it remarkable that social media can bring together people who might otherwise never have crossed paths? Now, my worthy opponents today might argue that social media leads to isolation and superficiality, but these arguments simply do not negate its capacity to draw us together. A healthy introvert will use social media to have easy access to human contact. In fact, social media may even enhance their ability to bond with people who are physically around them, since to them, social media is an interpersonal simulator, teaching them how to take off and land safely when flying in an interpersonal relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, if human beings in general are drifting apart today, it is because of greed, selfishness, bigotry, and prejudice. Let us not try to escape personal responsibility by simply and conveniently placing the blame on social media because in this modern, fast-paced world, it is the glue that holds us together. And that is the fact of the matter. With this, I rest my debate. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Questions, please. Yes, Palhav. Madam Interjecta, you mentioned in your debate that by using social media, we try to make new friends. But how can you trust those new people who, we, who you meet on social media? Thank you so much for your question, Mr. Interjecta. With the permission of the chair, would like to answer? Well, Mr. Interjecta, I did not mention that social media helps us to make new friends per se, but I did mention that it helps us to find or discover people who relatively share specific interests with, her, with us or hobbies with us and these people who we find on social media may offer support for us, may offer advice. Now all of us know that if we are located in a location where there are not many opportunities, social media provides those opportunities for us. We can seek people, we can seek professionals to help us out in case of job opportunities, maybe regarding our mental uh, awareness, regarding anything. People who are not, people who do not have access to opportunities maybe, they can use social media as a tool to actually gain awareness about various other things. So they do not help us to make friends per se, but they help us to find people who share common interests or maybe hobbies. So it's beneficial to us in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Um, yes, Konana. Uh, Madam Speaker, the hate comments left under posts make people have a really bad self-image about themselves, oftentimes leading to suicides. Is social media really bringing us together when all it does is pull us apart from even ourselves and this world? Please comment on that. Thank you so much for that question, Madam Interjector. It's a wonderful, wonderful question. I would love to answer that. Well, when you're speaking about spreading hatred, I think that's an inborn quality in people. We as humans have this trait where we feel bitter about
about people, where we feel hatred towards people who do not match up to our standards, or maybe just because they have achieved something, we feel jealous of them. That's basic nature. Now, blaming a platform, which is actually a tool for spreading positivity, also. We cannot ignore that social media spreads positivity, even if it's spreading a little bit of negativity. So, social, blaming social media for someone spreading hatred is just not viable. Like, for instance, if, for example, if one of my classmates was to win something, maybe I was gone for a comp I had gone for a competition, and my, one of my classmates had won that. Well, that would naturally make me bitter, bitter towards that person, make me resent towards that person, where does social media come into all of that? I think so. bitterness, hatred, resentment towards other people is just what you learn over the years, what you develop over the years by seeing people achieve something, achieve accomplishments, but it's just, it's just not right to blame a platform which can also be used to spread positivity for the hatred or the negativity that people are spreading. With that, I hope I have answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Sanya. Uh, can I please request people to uh, wake up Pushti and Matt Rowe, all of these children, if you could sit up straight. Pushti and the others, please sit up straight. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I now invite Arjun Sahu from Allen House to express his views against the motion. of the chairperson I would like to start my debate. They were staring at words and messages on a screen. They were sending images of hearts, hugs and smiles to people they hardly knew and would probably never meet. They thought they were so connected with society and with the world and yet they did not notice that a classmate of theirs was quietly wiping away her tears in a corner of their classroom. Do you think this could happen in our school? Maybe, maybe not. We wouldn't know though. Would we, when we just can't get ourselves to lift our eyes from our devices unless we are compelled to do so? That is what the law of gaining access to some form of social media does to us. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, respected judges and the House at large. I believe that those of us who think that social media draws people together are only deceiving themselves. I do not disagree that it is a means of communication and interaction but the problem is that the, because there is very little accountability on social media, people can easily spread hatred, neg negativity and misinformation with just one click. And the temptation to remain faceless and say whatever one thinks without worrying about, about the impact of our words is so great that as a society, we are becoming more and more insensitive and self-absorbed. So instead of being drawn together, even the members of the same family can be poles apart in terms of being emotionally connected. Jealousy, one of the seven deadly sins, tears people apart and social media gives rise to this very destructive and negative feeling. Instead of finding joy in little things with our friends and family, we keep gazing at posts of people enjoying their vacations in foreign countries, taking rides in luxurious vehicles and staying at expensive hotels. We feel inadequate, depressed bitter and resentful, and then we vent our frustration on the people who matter the most to us. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words carelessly uttered about me will leave scars for life. Unkind posts about others on social media can never be completely erased, and the damage they cause to human relationships, in many cases, can be irreparable. A neighbor falls sick, we send them a get well soon gif on WhatsApp. A friend is going through a family crisis, we send them a thumbs up emoji and think that our responsibility as a friend is over. Why bother to vis visit your brother's home to tie him Iraqi? Send him an Iraqi on social media instead. Don't make the effort to spend a weekend with your elderly grandparents. Just send, the send them the image of a hug and think that your job is done, which they may not know how to access anyway. I could cite one example after the other of how social media has fooled us into thinking that face-to-face -face interaction is just not necessary anymore. What happened to those times when, when everybody knew everybody else in our colonies and neighborhoods, when a death in a family would get all the neighborhood together to give support to the family of the deceased? 
when we would laugh and cry together, when we would give each other actual hugs and not virtual ones, when we would take out time to smell the flowers on our way to school instead of thinking about the reels we watched the previous night. My worthy opponents, you will have to disagree with me at this podium because the stance you pick for this debate requires you to do so. But deep down inside, you know I'm right, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, life is beautiful but very short and human relationships are way too precious to be sacrificed at the altar of social media. With this, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you, Aryan. Questions? Yes, come here. Mr. Speaker, how come all throughout this debate, all we have done is blame social media for our own actions? If we can't take our eyes off our phones, then it's on you and it's on me. How are we just blaming it on social media? Thank you for your question, Madam Interjector. With the permission of the Chair, I would like to answer your question. So, as you said, that it is our problem that we can't get ourselves from our devices. So, actually, social media is the very cause that we can't get ourselves can't get ourselves to lift our eyes from our devices. All the time, constantly, we are thinking about uh, going to our devices and opening some of the other social media sites. I would like to give you an example of our school only. Our school has restricted social media sites, but in spite of that, student, when a teacher enters a classroom, students are so glued to their devices, even when social media is not there, that they don't even stand up to wish their teacher. So if social media, if a thing like social media was allowed to be used in the school, I don't know what else would be happening. I think I answered your question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Colonel. Mr. Speaker, what about introverts? How are they supposed to communicate if it wasn't for social media? And thank you for your question, Madam Interjector, with the permission of the chair, I would like to answer. So, Madam uh, Interjector, as you mentioned, that what about introverts? So, social media is a very vast place it's a very vast place so there are there there is positivity as well but the greater part we don't see is that there is very negativity because on social media there is very little accountability there people can easily spread hatred and you know misinformation and malice so what if a introvert goes on social media and becomes a victim of cyberbullying that i think would be a bad bad decision for that person to take thank you Thank you, Arun. I request the first two rows of Arun and Coroners to please wake up and listen to what people have to say. I now invite Adya Vaskar from Condon House to express her views for the motion. It's Diwali night. A 65-year-old mother sits in her kitchen. A sad smile covers her face as she posts a picture of her homemade sweets on Facebook. A 25-year-old son who couldn't get a lead for Diwali sits in his office, smiling at the pictures his mother just posted. Hashtag have a Facebook Diwali. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. The topic under fire today is whether or not social media draws us together. And I, Adya Bhaskar, stands here on this podium today firmly in favor of the motion. Let us start by discussing what is social media. Social media is the means of inter interactions among people that they create, share and exchange information and ideas on relevant topics in virtual communities and networks. In a world where there is a craze for quitting traditional norms, leaving the joint family system and studying abroad, Social media is what keeps it all binded together and I'll be proving my point with the help of the next couple of arguments. The world's diverse cultures are laid out in front of us in the click of a button. The stories from all over the world are provided to us in a mere second and our loved one's face flashes on our screens without us having to travel miles to see them and yet we are still here debating whether or not social media brings us together. Let's travel down memory lane, shall we? 2020, quarantine struck, and while we were all locked away in our houses, bubbling laughter was heard on Instagram calls, 
cooking recipes were shared on YouTube, loving smiles were posted on Instagram, and a piece of her life was restored. 2021, the Me Too campaign against sexual harassment, assault, and rape culture blew up on social media. Hashtag Me Too was used all over the world to draw attention to the magnitude of the problem, providing men and women all over the world justice. 2022, the Black Lives Matter campaign started and it took social media by storm. The whole world came together as a community to draw together and support the matter in whatever way they could. Is the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen, let me repeat that for you, is the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen, are we really going to neglect what a positive change social media has brought in today's world? Miles are measured in the matter of a few seconds. Smiles are brought on people's faces. Thousands and thousands of fundraisers have helped people throughout the world. This is the time, this is the moment we are living in. If that doesn't bring us together, then I really don't know what does. Let me ask you all a question. Have you never once smiled at your social media account? Because I have. In a world where there is so much restriction and there is so much pressure, social media brings us all together. I have a little sister all the way in Texas. I have never once met her but I know everything about her from her favourite actress to the latest nursery rhyme she has memorised. And that ladies and gentlemen is what social media has done for me. I think it's time that we get out of our own little bubbles and see what a difference social media has made in this world. From Shark Tank episodes to MasterChef Australia, from celebrities gossip to politics drama, from Taylor Swift's breakup to Chandrayaan's landing, and from everything in this world, social media provides us everything. And whether you agree with me or not, my dear opponents and fellow friends, social media is changing the world and bringing us all closer together. Thank you. Questions? Yes, what about the fake news and hate statements on social media which isolates people at the end? Thank you for your question, Mr. Interjector. Well, I would just like to say, I would just like to quote Audrey Hepburn actually. Social media is not a bad tool. What matters most is how we use it. Unquote. Well, all I would like to say is just because a few people decide to be fake and vulgar on social media, are we really going to be blaming a whole platform for it? It's you, it's me, it's us as a whole community that is spreading this fake news and that is leaving these hate comments. Social media was never made to be, uh, to be left hate comments on. Social media was made to draw people together and it still does that and if uh, and I believe that we should change ourselves rather than blaming social media for all of it. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, Parnas. You mentioned in the debate that social media has changed the world. Yes, it is changing the world, but in a negative way. As everyone has become so addicted that they don't know what is happening around the world. So how would they know that this news is going on, the present? All throughout this debate, all we have done is blame social media for our own actions. If we are glued to our phones and if we can't take our eyes off, how come all we are doing is blaming social media for it? If you aren't aware, that's on you, not on social media. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrew. I now invite Emmanuel Noah from Condon House to express his views against the motion. With the permission of the chairperson, I wrote to start my debate. I got off my phone for once and had a conversation with my family. They're actually nice people. Good afternoon to the house at large. I, Emmanuel Noah of Conlin House, stand before you to speak against the topic which is on fire today. Social media draws us together. I will be proving my stance.
to five constructive, constructive arguments. Firstly, social media does not bring us together. In fact, it pushes people further apart. It keeps people glued to their phones and laptops and stops them from having real conversations with others. Sure, it allows us to connect with people from every corner of the world. But what difference does that make if we can't even talk to the person sitting right across us at lunch giving our full attention? Coming to our second constructive argument, no doubt social media allows us to talk with our friends at any time of the day with a click of a button. But the conversation lacks quality and are less genuine. There's only so much you can communicate through pictures and emojis. It's better to meet people and interact with them face to face. You can watch them smile, hear them laugh, notice their body language and even feel their energy. These are the important aspects of communication that are missing from social media. My worthy opponents might say that social media makes the world smaller and brings far people closer. Now, the answer to that brings me to my third constructive argument. Social media acts as a real obstacle for face-to-face -face communication with those already next to us. When you let yourself dive into the world of social media and, uh, and all its attractive features to communicate, share pictures and even share locations, you may find yourself drifting further and further away from the people who are closer to you. Fourthly, the ability for people to engage in arguments at a distance on social media has revealed an appealing lack of civility in many deep pockets of misogyny, ethnic antipathy and general intolerance for difference. I agree, these are attributes of users, not the technology. But social media gives them a volume that they otherwise would not have. Now, coming to my final argument. Social media tears people apart by damaging relationships, causing isolation and decreasing productivity rates. Social media can be used to create false perception of one another online, which can be referred to as code switching. Code switching is the act of changing how one acts or speaks to fit in, whether it, be, it, whether it is to feel as a part of something or to form a better image of oneself. Users mostly use social media to code switch. In conclusion, I would just like to say that while social media fosters an environment and belonging in the digital world, it definitely forces a disconnect between people in the real world. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Yes, Carlos. Mr. Speaker, don't you think that the information you have taken for this debate is also from forms of social media? So how social media does not draw us together? Thank you for your question. With the permission of the chairperson, I would like to start the debate. I totally do not agree with you. This debate was written by my house coordinator and, it, and the part that it brings social media together does not include in this debate. What I mean to say is that social media does not bring us together, but this debate was written for, but this debate was written that social media does not bring us together. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, for us. How can you say that social media breaks relationships when people who live in different countries can now swiftly contact each other, which does not let their relationship fall apart, as it would have without the social media. What is your take on that? Thank you for the question. With the permission of the chairperson, I'd like to answer the question. As you said in your question, that it allows us to connect with people, our loved ones from all across the world. But when you're with your loved ones at home and you are talking with other people from all around the world, and you're not giving attention to, attention to them who are sitting in front of you, I don't think that it brings us together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. With this, we come to the end of the debate.